up, what's up, Mavuno? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night if you're about to sleep. Anyway, you're welcome to the Mavuno service. I don't know how you're feeling today, but I'm just feeling like I want to praise the Lord. I feel like I want to praise the Lord because He has made me able. I am breathing. I am jumping. What is there left to do, y'all? For it is a good thing to give praise to the Lord Most High. If you don't give Him praise, the rocks will do. So anyway, Kathy, are you ready to take us away? Yes, I am. All right. Put your hands together. Let me see you go.
our refuge, you are our Father, you are our friend, you are our Redeemer, you are a healer, you are a counselor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty King. Thank you, beginning at the end. Hakuna kama wewe. Na kwa budu. Kwa mana wewe ndo wa style sifa. Asante baba. Asante yesu. Asante roho utaka. Nilidhane nitaangame ya tabu. Zili ni zi. Sono neko nika mlili ya bwana Kwa ningome tumai nini mwamba wa We know
Mungua Israel in the end. Jina la ko Jehovah. Well, in the end. Well, in the end. Come on, y'all. Just worship the King of Kings. Come on, Ajua. Ya kwamba, yeye ndo mwanzo na mwisho. Come on, Ajua. Yeye ndo mungu wa Israeli. Hallelujah. Asante Baba. Hallelujah. Time we knew the time see food the emocosi ni alpha na omega the time we knew Alpha, na Omega. Come on, one more time, y'all. Time From wherever you are, what you've been through. Time what your deepest parts of your heart know. Die. Oh, hallelujah. One more time from the bottom of our hearts, Nitam we know. No matter what it will look like, He's bringing me to the end. The Asante Baba. It is in Jesus' name we have praised and worshipped Mavuno. Amen. Stay blessed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Happy New Year, Mavuno. My name is Pastor Mredi Wanjao, Pastor M, Senior Pastor of Mavuno Church. Just so grateful to be able to worship uh, today together. And uh, so happy that we're this far into the year. We're a week into the new year. I hope it's going well for you. Uh, we've been doing our 21 day fast as a church. And uh, many of you have been walking this journey with us. For some of you, it's your first time. I pray it's going well and uh, that you are encouraged, that you are strengthened. Uh, every morning we've been having our prayers uh, with our campus networks. and so. If you are, uh, have not been part of these prayers, you, you can see a link on your, on your screen and join our campus prayers. Go to our website, join our campus prayers because uh, it's a way to encourage each other as we walk this journey. We want to make sure that 2022 is a year that counts. And every, every week uh, over the last uh, month of uh, 2021, I, I, I came to you and I shared with you about one of the initiatives, exciting initiatives we're doing this year. We're calling it Free the Future. It's the whole idea that we are challenging everyone at Mavuno this year to give a first fruit offering, uh, something that would, uh, a sacrificial offering equivalent to one month's salary this year towards uh, liquidating, towards paying off the mortgage for our Hill City headquarters. And uh, we've talked about the fact that this was actually something practiced in the Bible, the first fruit offering, where, where people would come every year to God and give of their harvest, the, first, the best of their harvest to God, the first part of their harvest to God. And they would do this in trust for God. The Hebrew word is bikurim, which really means the promise to come. And every time they gave a first fruit, they were freeing their future. They were actually provoking God, honoring God and provoking Him to look after the rest of their harvest. And as we start this year and as we enter into this campaign, uh, 
Maybe some of you have been asked, wondering how, uh, what's, what's the amount that we're trying to raise. Uh, we were able to raise $2.2 million uh, back in 2013 when we were raising funds to move into the Hill City campus. And that was an astronomical amount, as you can imagine. We paid that off and then we took a mortgage of $1.7 million. And we've been paying that off faithfully every month. Uh, the balance of what we are supposed to pay right now that would help us completely liquidate the whole loan, including the interest, is $1.5 million, which is about, uh, if you're talking in Kenya shillings, that's about 150 million uh, Kenya shillings. Uh, you know, it's very interesting that at the end of last year, uh, I shared this uh, challenge to a group of leaders that were gathered at what we called our gathering, the gathering, the leaders gathering uh, in uh, December uh, of 2021. And the leaders there uh, made a pledge towards Free the Future. And we were able to pledge up to, I, I, I believe it was a figure of 10,000 US dollars, one, uh, 10 million Kenya shillings. And so we already have pledges from a very small group of leaders, the people who lead Mavuno Church from the different campuses. And I'm very excited that our leaders have stepped up, including myself and my wife, we're stepping up already. And we're saying we're going to lead God's people, but we're going first. We're giving our pledges first. And so today we will officially want to launch the Free the Future comp uh, uh, campaign for the rest of the church and also to launch the app. Uh, we have an app that will help us to just uh, keep track. This is to help every member keep track of their giving uh, this year, uh, of their giving towards this campaign. And so let me just explain really quickly how you make your pledge. Uh, the first thing you want to do is to uh, use the URL on the screen right now and uh, go on it with your phone or with your computer, it doesn't matter. Uh, and what will happen, happen is you'll find that there'll be an opportunity for you to sign up and create an account. Now that's your personalized account. And you put your name in, put your email, uh, make sure you put the correct email because it's gonna send you a verification address. And then once you do that, then you'll be able to get, get online and make your pledge. You can choose how much you, how, how you wanna give that pledge. Uh, you can either commit to give it as a one-time payment or you can make different payments uh, between January to September 2022 when we are trusting God that we will have paid off uh, this, uh, this mortgage. Now, the beauty with the app is you can log in at any time, at any point, day or night, update your payments. Uh, when you've made a payment uh, towards your pledge, you it can help you remember how much you still have to go. Uh, and it's just a way that you're able to keep track with where you are with your pledge. And uh, one of the things that I'm really trusting God as we take this step, and I'm so excited, by the way, for the team that has come together to help us put the technology to support the campaign. Thank you so much. One of the things that God promised us, and it's really the word, I believe, the verse, that is our theme verse for this year. It's 1 Corinthians 2 chapter 9. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived the things that God has in store for those who love Him. I really believe this year that as we commit to honor God, as we commit to walk with Him, as we fast, as we pray, as we are generous with our resources, as we wait on Him, uh, the Bible says as we seek Him first that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has in store for us as his children. And so let me pray for us, even as we come to a time of giving. Father, I thank you. Thank you so much for this church. Thank you for every single person, every single son of God, every single daughter of God who is in the house today. Whether you're, they're watching online, whether they are watching uh, in, uh, whether they're watching this video in a physical location, I bless you for every one of your children. And Lord, I thank you because even as we come into this year, we know it's a walk of faith and not of sight. And so even as we trust you with our giving, I pray that Lord, you would give us faith for the things that are ahead of us. Faith for the business that you've called us to. Faith for the way that you've called us to raise our families this year. I pray that, Lord, we will do everything by faith this year. Lord, I pray for us that even as we commit ourselves to give towards your work, that, Lord, you would show that you are not a debtor to any man. That, Father, even as we look after your business, you will look after our business. I pray for anyone who is sick right now in the house. I pray that, Father God, this year will be a year of testimonies, of healing, of your blessing and abundance over every family, every one of us. And so, Lord, even as we seek to walk with you, free our future, help us to be free to serve you, to do all the things you've called us to. I bless you, God's people now. Even as we wait to receive God's word, I bless you. Uh, may God just visit you powerfully, for we pray all these things in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. And God's people say, Amen. So I want to begin today with a question. Who is a person who has had the most positive impact on your life besides your parents or your spouse? So your parents or your spouse can't be the answer. But who's that person who's had the most positive impact on your life? 
besides your parents or your spouse. I want you to just take a moment and think about that person. Write them down if you have, if you have a, a moment to do that. If you're with somebody, you can actually shout out the name. But who's that person who's had the most positive impact on your life besides your parents or your spouse? You know, my person, the person who's had the most positive impact on my life was definitely Bishop Oscar Maria of Nairobi Chapel. I met him when I was just finishing high school. And he was an intern pastor at Nairobi Baptist Church. Now, I had no idea when I met him of the incredible impact this person was about to have on my life. I mean, I, he, he, he was pastor of a, a, a church, a small church called Nairobi Chapel. And I joined that church uh, when I joined college. And then after that point, I joined the worship team when I was, and I was pretty new as a Christian. I was pretty new at this whole thing of following Jesus. Uh, I'd given my life to Jesus, but I was still in my old party lifestyle. And, and you know, it was interesting because uh, serving in church, uh, being part of the ministry he was leading, was one of the things that actually helped me make a resolution and start actually following Jesus, like become very serious about my walk with Jesus. But it was interesting because when I graduated, he invited me and my girlfriend to serve for a year. In this thing he was calling an internship program he was starting at the church. Now, originally I had no intention of doing so because my ambition was to be a rich pharmacist. And the emphasis was on the word rich. I was a young student. I had my life ahead of me. I was sure I was going to be a millionaire. And so this plan about working in church, working in church, being rich, those two things had nothing to do with each other in my mind. And, 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 but, but, but by God's grace, I said yes. And that decision is probably why I'm standing here today. It's probably why I'm married to the person I'm married to today. It's probably why I've brought up my children. We brought up our children the way we have today. And you know, I want to say this, that the many people who've been blessed because of our ministry would probably not have been blessed if not for this man. Mavuno might not even, might not even exist if not for this person. What felt like a random encounter back in high school was God setting me up to become the person that I had been created to be. Now this January, we're starting a whole new series called Limitless. And we're going to be talking about pretty simple but very, very important, a neglected way that we can begin to remove the spiritual limits from our lives and connect with our God-given destiny. You see at Mavuno, we've taught this for many years. We believe that every single person was created to fulfill a God-given purpose. That's your destiny. None of us was created to be born, to go to school, to get a job, to get married, to make money, and then to die. Come on, you are created for a purpose. And along the journey of purpose, along the journey of life, God will play strategic, seemingly random encounters with strategic people to help you move towards that purpose. Let me say that again. Along the journey of your life, God will place some seemingly random encounters with strategic people. And these people will help you move towards your God-given purposes. And, and, and I want to just share that because I believe this, 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 uh, this whole January, we're going to be talking about this kind of encounters and how you enter into such encounters. And I want to talk about one instance when this happened in the Bible. Uh, it's narrated by Matthew. Matthew was Jesus' disciple. And in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 22, he talks about what looked like a random encounter. But it turned out to be a life-changing encounter that would change not just the people in that encounter, but it would change the world in which we live in. In a very real sense, if this encounter had not happened, none of us would be here today. So I want us to read this uh, story together from Matthew. And it says this. It says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they immediately left their nets and followed him. Now going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Now I suspect that this day would forever be marked as one of the most important days in these men's lives. Peter and John, I mean, they're having a regular, Peter and Andrew, ha having a regular day in their office. I mean, they're brothers. They're doing what they've always done. The Bible tells us that they were casting nets into the sea. Why are they doing this? Because that's what fishermen do. They catch fish for a living. And, and then along comes this man as they're busy at work. Along comes this man who makes a strange, a strange invitation to them. He says, listen. Guys, 
if you follow me, I'm going to make you into something greater than what you trained for. I'm going to make you into something that you have not even dreamt about yet. Something greater. I'm going to make you into what you were created to be. Now, I'm sure at that point they had no clue. But saying yes to that invite would change their lives forever. It would cause these ordinary fishermen to become something they never had dreamt, even in their wildest dreams. I'm sure as they were dreaming, they had big dreams. Maybe they thought they'd become famous fishermen, the most famous fishermen in the world. They'd catch the most fish of anybody they knew. They'd grow a big company and become, become big, and they'd make more money than any. Maybe they had dreams like that. I don't know if they did. But what I'm saying is, it doesn't matter what their dreams were. What Jesus was calling them into was something far greater than their greatest dreams for themselves. I want to say this for you right now. The dreams that God has for you are greater than your greatest dreams for yourself. Come on, in 2022, there are some things that God is dreaming for you. And God's dreams for you are far greater than your dreams for yourself. I believe uh, for us, uh, that, 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 that right now we're, in the ver we're on the verge of something really powerful. And some of you are about to enter into a space that you could never have dreamt about because Jesus has big plans. God's dreams for you are far greater than your dreams for yourself. Now what these men had just done, as they're just walking through life, they had met their destiny helper. Now for every one of us, God will bring certain people into your life at important junctures to help you prepare you for your God-given destiny. Now these people are people who are going to help you think things you would never normally think and do things you would never normally do in order to get to places you normally would never get to. I want to say this, that your family of origin, your parents, uh, the place you grew up, God bless them, they prepared you for good things. They gave you an education. They helped you become who you are today. But I want to say this, that the things, the plans God has for you are far greater than the things that your family has for you, the plans your family has for you. And that God will bring people into your life who will help you achieve God's purpose that is far greater than anybody has even dreamt about you. Look at your neighbor right now as you're sitting in that living room with them, as you're sitting in the office with them. God's plans for them are so great. If you could see God's plans for them right now, you'd be like, oh my God, I'm in the presence of greatness. Oh yeah, this is greatness we're sitting next to because God's plans for you are far greater than your plans for yourself. And you know, we see this thing happening in scripture. Many times people are just living a random life and then boom, they met somebody one day, a random encounter, and it became the thing that prepared them for their God-given destiny. Listen, the story of Moses, he married this desert princess. He's run away from his home. He meets this desert girl. Uh, he doesn't know as he marries her that the father-in-law, the, the person who is her father, is about to become his friend, about to train him to lead a stubborn people in the wilderness and to govern a nation through delegation. Uh, this man was about to become, Moses was about to become the greatest leader who had ever lived, but his father-in-law would become that destiny helper for him. A young boy named Samuel was brought to a priest named Eli, you know the story, by his mom. And he had no idea that this man would mentor him to become the great kingmaker and prophet. Samuel was the only person who was both a prophet, a priest, and a king in the Bible. And he was about to be mentored by this man called Eli. A young widow, named Ruth. She followed her mother-in-law, Naomi. She had a chance to say no, but she said yes to her, not knowing that that yes would prepare her to become the grandmother to all of Judah's kings. I mean, look at that. Random encounter. My goodness, opening up to an extraordinary life. A young shepherd named David was brought to the king's house to play music for the king. And he had no idea that this king was about to mentor him to become Israel's greatest king. Uh, a young farmer named Elijah, uh, Elisha, he followed Elijah, the fiery prophet, and he was mentored to become Israel's greatest prophet. Oh my goodness, it's full. The Bible is full of stories of divine encounters with destiny helpers. And so these 12 unknown men, peasants, mentored by Jesus, we've just read the story of four of them, the uh, first four who are called. And 11 of them would become the great leaders who would spread the gospel throughout the world and change the lives of billions of people, including us. Listen, in each of these cases, a person said yes to an invitation to follow someone else. And in each of these cases, a previously ordinary person achieved an extraordinary thing and achieved extraordinary things because they followed the destiny helper that God placed in their life. Through following that person, 
through learning from them. Uh, they understood how to grow. They understood God better. They knew how to grow in their faith. They grew in their competence. They discovered they were made for more than they had imagined. Their influence was taken to a new level. They were catapulted to a whole different space. And their lives became an example for future generations to follow. Simply because they said yes to their God-given destiny helper. Now the crazy thing as you hear this story is that not all these destiny helpers were the most qualified people. In fact, they were not necessarily the best people. When you hear the story of Samuel, I mentioned Samuel earlier, he was a young man who was mentored by Eli to become, a, a, to become this great national leader. But Eli, who was his mentor, failed in his priestly role because what did he do? You remember the story? He neglected his children and he neglected God's warning. Most importantly, God warned him about not neglecting his sons. God warned him to discipline his sons. Some, uh, Eli ignored God's warnings. But listen, by following Eli, this imperfect leader, guess what happened to Samuel? Samuel learned some very important things, including how not to ignore God's voice. And that's why you're going to read about Samuel. The one thing about you'll always hear about Samuel is he was an obedient man. He did what God told him immediately. There was never any hesitation. Another story is David. A uh, young guy being mentored by a very insecure destiny helper. His name was King Saul. And King Saul was so insecure that the popularity of David caused him to become jealous. And he tried to kill David. I mean, talk about that. I mean, you've got a mentor who now he's helping you become to grow. You're becoming even better than him. You're becoming more, more, uh, more famous than him. And the guy is trying to put you down. By the way, there are many stories like this I hear of mentors who just become insecure and they try to crush the people they are mentoring. This, this city is littered with people, especially in churches, who say, I, 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 as soon as I began to grow, my spiritual father just crushed me. But you know what happens? David continues to follow Saul and what happens? He learns how not to be an insecure leader. Instead, he learns to be an authentic and real leader. And that's why his book of songs, the Psalms, is one of the, it's, in fact, it's probably the most read book of all time. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes following your destiny helper will not teach you just how to lead, but it also teach you how not to lead. It will teach you how not to be. You'll be able to say, my goodness, I want to be like this person in this way, but oh my gosh, there's some things I don't want to be like. But they're still your destiny helper, preparing you for your time to lead. Now, this is an interesting message for me to start a year with. Because I really am convinced this year that it's a year that God is going to bring destiny helpers into the lives of his people. And I often teach people, uh, this is something I teach many times, especially when I'm teaching people in their 20s, about the importance of destiny helpers. I tell them that the most important thing you can ever do after college, and I know I have people in this room who are in that space. Uh, you're, you're, you're young, you're just beginning your career, you're in your 20s, your 30s. I tell them, here's the thing. The most important thing you can do in life is not find a lucrative career, but discover your purpose. You need to figure out your direction before you set out on your journey. Because the thing is, many people rush after college to send out a hundred CVs. They want to become rich as quick as possible to get the first good job that comes along. And they figure out which hustle will make them the most money and they go for it. But what I like to tell you, what I'd like to tell young people is this. If you're supposed to be going to Kisumu and you're on a bus to Mombasa, going faster will not get you there faster. Are you with me? Yeah, you go faster, you're only going farther away from where you're supposed to be going. You tell the guy, look, we're late, let's go faster. He increases the speed, you're going farther away from where you're supposed to be going. And there are too many people right now who are in career journeys, who are in journeys where they are going away from their purpose, and they are going so fast, but the faster you go, the farther you are from where God intended you to be. And so I tell them, before setting out on your career journey, the most important thing is to know where you're supposed to be going. Because if you know your kingdom purpose, your kingdom destination, then you, your speed will get you there faster. And God will give you destiny helpers to help you go faster where you're meant to be going. So I've come to discover, by the way, and, and like I say, I teach this many times, especially I'm invited to speak in places where there are many young people working. I like to teach people about the importance of discovering purpose and getting people to help them discover purpose. But I've come to realize it's not just people in their 20s and 30s who need to hear this message. Many people who are older are successful in their work and careers, but they hate what they do. They make a lot of money, but they find no meaning or purpose in what they do. It's just a job. They wake up on Mondays and it's, oh God, it's Monday. 
And Friday reaches and they can't wait. It's like, thank God it's Friday. Because listen, it's like, my God, I hate my job. I'm glad it pays me. I'm glad it's paying the bills. But this has no meaning. It's the same thing I did last year. I'm not growing as a person. I hate the politics in my office. This is not what I was created for. But they're stuck because they're going faster and faster in the wrong direction. Listen to me, God's people. You are made for more than that. Tell your neighbor, you are made for more. Yeah, you're made for more. What matters is not speed alone, but speed in the right direction. Achieving the purpose you are created to, to achieve. And one of the most important ways that God will usher you into understanding your, your, your direction, into understanding the purpose he created you for, is by putting destiny helpers into your life. Following the right person could make the difference between living a, an ordinary and mediocre life, full of regrets, and living a life full of meaning and impact. And so the question I want to ask us all as we enter into 2022, this is an, it's going to be an important year for many of us. And the question I want to ask you today is who are your destiny helpers? Who are your destiny helpers? Please write this question down. This is important for you. Who are your destiny helpers? You need to start praying about that question. You need to start thinking about that question. Who is that person? Who are those people that God has put into or is putting into your life in this season? to help you become everything that he created you to be. Now, even as I ask that question, maybe I have some good news for you and I have a great answer to your question. Because you see, God's purpose in setting up the church was to create a space where everyone would be turned into the best version of themselves. That's actually God's intention for you. Discipleship is the process by which ordinary people are turned into everything that God created them to be. The limits are removed from their lives. And they are helped to become the best version of themselves. And as you know, Jesus' last command to his disciples is, go and make disciples of all nations. The core business of the church is to help you become everything that God created you to be. And one of, one of uh, Jesus' disciples, the Apostle Paul, he realized this. And he, say, he said it so, he, he explained it to the people in the church of Colossae. Colossae was one of the churches he was pastoring. And he wrote a letter to them. And in Colossians chapter 1, verse 28 to 29, he said, he, he, he wrote to these people. He said, he said to them, so we tell others about Christ, warning and teaching everyone with the wisdom God has given us. And then he said this. This is his, giving his job description. He says, we want to present them to God perfect in their relationship to Christ. And that's why I, as your pastor, this is why I struggle so hard depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. In other words, what Paul was saying to these people is that God has raised some destiny helpers for you right here in the church that you're part of. And God has provided you with spiritual leaders, people who are his agents to help you become perfect in Christ. What does it mean to be perfect in Christ? It means to become everything you are created for. It means to become that limitless person. It means to become that person who has no limits, who, who's achieving the purpose God created them for. It means to become a person full of impact. Because listen, God's plan for you is very simple. John 14, 12, Jesus says to his disciples, the things you've seen me do, you will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. In other words, you are created to do great things. You are created to do even greater things than Jesus. Oh my gosh. This is you we are talking about. God created you to do amazing, great things. That's what 2022 is meant to be about. It's meant to be about you doing greater things. That your spiritual life is meant to be at the place where you're impacting the people around you. That there are meant to be miracles and signs and wonders around you. This is what you were created for. And here's what Paul is saying to the people in Colossae. That listen, when you come to that spiritual space, that God has given you leaders, destiny helpers, to help open doors for you. And he has already empowered them through his mighty power to do so. So what am I saying? I'm saying that God has raised some people within your spiritual community to act as door openers for you. Yes, there are doors in front of you. There are going to be locked doors. There are things you're praying about. There are things God created you for. Some of these things are incredible things. They look impossible. But God has provided destiny helpers who are going to open the doors for you. That's what Pastor Oscar did for me many years ago. He opened the doors for me to become everything that God created me to be. I've stood in front of incredible spaces. I've mentored amazing people. I've seen impact across nations. I would never have seen this impact. Maybe I'd have become a rich pharmacist. But I would never have become everything God wanted me to be. But for a destiny helper who called me and I said yes to him. 
The Bible says, however, that not everybody said yes when Jesus invited them. Yeah? I know there are guys who said yes. The Bible tells us uh, Peter and Andrew, immediately, they said yes. And they stepped out of the boat and followed Jesus. It tells us John and James, when they were called, they left their father in the boat and they followed Jesus. But there's another guy whose name we don't know. And it's, he's, the, the Bible sometimes calls him the rich young ruler. And this man, maybe he was created for a great purpose. Maybe he was the one who was meant to introduce the people of China to their creator. I don't know. Maybe this guy was going to be the person who was famous, who changed the world. Maybe many of us would be named after him today. This man was on the verge of destiny. He liked Jesus. His life was already aligned. He was doing what he is supposed to be doing. But then he comes to Jesus and he's like, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready. And then Jesus asks him something. Matthew chapter 19, verse 21 to 22. Jesus tells him this. He says, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give them to the poor. And you'll have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. I don't know why Jesus asked him that. He didn't tell Peter and John, to, uh, Peter and Andrew to do the same thing. Uh, he didn't tell them, go sell everything and follow me. Maybe for this guy, money was such a big deal for him. It's like Jesus was like, you have to sort out this money thing. Leave money and follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad. Why? Because he had great wealth. Jesus offered this man perfection. Dude, he's like, if you want to be perfect, if you want to be everything God created you to be for, if you want to have that life that will have amazing impact, go sell those things, go give away those things and follow me. But the man was not convinced. It was clear that following his God-given purpose would threaten his ambition, threaten his fortune. And so what did this man do? He said no to Jesus. There are people who actually said no to Jesus. And I want to put it this way. That's why none of us know his name. That's why none of your cousins is called by his name. In fact, we don't even know what his name is. By the way, you have cousins called Peter and Andrew, don't you? <laughs> and you have cousins called James and John, don't you? I mean, this is the thing. Nobody knows his name because he said no to following his divine destiny helper. And I believe that this story was put here as a warning for us. God is going to bring destiny helpers into your life. My point is he already has put them into that space. He's already putting them around you. But he will never force you to follow them. Now next week I want to talk about how to locate those destiny helpers and the things that stop us from following them and then how to begin to engage with them in 2022. We're going to be talking about that the rest of this month. And I'm telling you this is going to be a fantastic month. If you have friends who are in that space where they're grappling with what their purpose is, if you have friends who are in that place where they grow, want to grow to become everything God created them to be, get them to watch this message and then Get them to come this whole month and let's connect. Let's talk together. Let's learn together about how to find the destiny helpers who will open the doors that God has for us in 2022. The verse that God gave me for 2022, by the way, God's church, is 1 Corinthians 2.9. And it says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived the things that God has in store for those who love him. I really believe that's 2022 for us. That it's going to be a limitless year. I believe this is going to be an amazing year for all of us at Mavuno, a year of growth and multiplication like we've never seen before. I believe 2022 promises to be the best year of your life. I'm trusting God is going to be the best year of my life so far. <laughs> but it begins, listen, it begins with you saying yes. Three words, three, three letters, simple word, yes. And that word is a word that's going to help you enter into the space that God has for you. And as I conclude, I want to challenge you to go into this new year with your hands open. I want you to, inv to invite you to have a posture of, yes, Lord, I want to do it your way in 2022. Some of us are coming in 22 with our plans, with our thoughts, with our ideas, with our, the way we are going to survive 2022. But listen, you can't have blessing in your hands if your hands are closed like this, if you're grasping to your plan. I believe that God wants you to open your hands this year and to say yes to his will. Say yes to the destiny helpers he brings your way. Say yes to everything he has for you. Lord, I may have some plans for my life, but I believe your plans for me are greater than my plans for myself. They are better than my best plans. If you sense this is where you are, I'd like to lead you in a prayer of surrender. I want us to begin the year by surrendering and recommitting ourselves to follow God fully in 2022. But even as I do so, I believe there are some who are watching today You've never given your life to Jesus. Perhaps you did a long time ago, but your faith has grown cold. You've, you've not been to church in a long time. You've not, you've not followed Jesus in a long time. 
And as we, be, as we begin this year, I believe that God's words for you are, come, follow me, and I will make you. I'll make you everything that you're created to be. I'll show you all those things you are looking for, all those things that are distracting you. I'm going to give them to you because I created you for more. Maybe even more than you think right now. These guys thought they were created to catch fish. God was creating them to impact people. And maybe right now the things that are distracting you are so small compared to God's plan for you. God's plan for you is greater than your greatest plan for yourself. And I want to invite you to just open your heart and invite Him into your heart. Invite Him to lead you. Ask Him to come in and to be your Lord and your Savior. And pray that God will allow you to be everything He created you to be. I believe 2022 is the year for you to give your life to Jesus and for you to see the results of following Jesus in your life. And so I want to just begin by leading you in a prayer. Uh, but even as we do that, I want to just invite the team uh, just to lead us in this song. Yes, yes. Because there's so much peace, God's people, when we say yes. You'd be so surprised. There's so much peace when I say yes, when I stop wrestling with God, when I stop grappling for the things I want and allow Him to be the one who leads me. There is peace when I say yes. There is peace when I say yes. I might not see it now, but you save the best for all who trust you and obey. There is an answer. No more. There is peace when I say yes. I might not see it now, but you say the best for all. This is your prayer. You're saying, Lord, I want to give my life to you. And I'm going to ask you wherever you are, if you're in your living room, you're in your office, you're somewhere in public transportation, wherever you are, I'm going to ask you to say this prayer after me. If this is your prayer and you're saying, Lord, I want to give you my life as we begin this year, I want you to pray after me. Dear Jesus, I come in, uh, please come into my life. Forgive my sins. I've tried to do it my way. But in 2022, come on, say these words after me. In 2022, I want to give my life to you. I surrender everything I have to you. Come into my life. Fill me with your spirit and make me brand new. From this day forward, I am saved. I am a child of God. I want God's best for my life. And I will follow you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody give a big shout to the Lord. We bless God for you, for every single one of you who's prayed that prayer. If you're watching online, please uh, text us. Use our info, info at mavunochurch.org email. Tell us that you've given your life to Jesus. We'd love to send you material to help you keep following Jesus. And hey, we are so excited about this. This is the best decision you could ever make with your life. Saying yes to Jesus is the door, of the biggest door opener of your life. And so we're so excited that you've made that decision and we can't wait to help you grow. And then I want to just pray for everybody else. If you're here and you're ready to surrender 22 to 2022 to Jesus, as we come into this year, we don't know what the year has. Maybe it has good things, maybe it has difficult things. We don't know what business is going to look like. We don't know what politics will look like. We don't know what health will look like. But the one thing we know, we know the one who holds the future. And he holds it in his hand. He's, he knows what it's going to be like. And so we can trust our lives to Him. And if you're ready and you'd like to surrender your life to Jesus in 2022, I want to just 
invite you to surrender everything to Jesus with me. I uh, pray this prayer. It's going to be on your screen even as we pray it. Let's go together. Loving Heavenly Father, I thank you for all that you are and all that you do for me through your Son, Christ Jesus Christ. I praise you for the gift of my life and for another year to live and to serve you. As the year begins, I place myself entirely in your hands. I surrender to you my whole self, my heart, my mind, my memory, my imagination, my will, my emotions, my passions, my body, my possessions, my identity, my sexuality, my desire for human approval, my weaknesses, and all my desires. I surrender every situation in my life to you. I surrender every relationship I am in to you. I surrender every concern and fear I have to you. I surrender any doubts, wounds, anxiety, worry, and confusion to you. I trust you to care for me and to help me care for others around me in a perfectly loving way. I say yes to all that you have for me. And let's say this last part. And as I surrender everything to you, I ask you now, Father, to fill me with your Holy Spirit and all the gifts and fruits of your Spirit. Help me to follow you this year without hesitation and without reservation. Lead me to divine destiny helpers that you have prepared for me. Let my life, my faith, my family, my career, and everything else bring glory and honor to you in 2022. Let's say this together. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God be the glory. Amen. See you next week.